Now we have one here by, uh, by what's his name and the other fellas, and this here is flies, because, you know, people have been telling me that they're, that they're finding flies in their house and stuff, and people are like, you know, does the little fly know something that I don't know? Is, you know, is spring actually in the air? And another friend of mine told me that he actually had a wasp that was in his house. <laughs> you might have a problem with that, you might want to clear that nest out somewhere. But, you know, there are little critters starting to float around a little bit, so perhaps spring is in the air. We're going to see. Anyways, this one here, wait, let's name the other fellows with flies, because come June, May, June, we're going to be plagued by those buggers again. So, here we go. And, you know, folks, I should tell you that this is, this is no ordinary radio show this evening. Corey's sitting in the corner with a camcorder. I think he's collecting evidence for blackmail later on. Um, yeah, you know, we've, we've got the pizza in the background here, and... He's, he's, he's really testing me as far as you know how much I can put myself out there because nah, I know these people are going to be watching me. Not just listening to me, it's watching, it's worse. Because you know, I've, I've had lots of people tell me, you know, geez, you sound really sexy on the air. And I'm like, yeah, I know, it's a really good microphone. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to start carrying that thing around. But you know, now, now they're going to see the truth of the, ra the reality of the matter. And like always, whatever you got going on in your head is better than what the real thing is. So. I'm going to be uncovered. Anyways, <laughs> we have, we have, we have a mess right now. So I have no idea where I am. Oh, okay. We're doing Jimmy Rankin with the touch of an angel. That would be. Let me polish my halo while we're at it. <laughs> okay. We're just having a bit of a. a I'd like to say it's a technical error, but really it's, a, it's an operator malfunction error, also known as an ID10T error. You, you really put those string those letters together and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's, I suppose I'll let you in on it. If you write it out, it's a little bit more obvious. ID10T error. Idiot. That would be me. Anyways, we have a song here by uh, Don McLean, which is requested every week by a certain friend of mine. So anyways, I apologize for having to play this song all the time, but we're going to play it because we know those poor Americans are going to be crying in their soup later on when they lose the metal. So we're just, you know, just going to rub it in a little bit here. And uh, we're going to play this for you, Mike. Hope you enjoy your American pie because you're not going to have any American medals. I have to say, my apologies to you people who are like me, you know how you, you hear a song and then you just keep playing it over and over again in your mind? Well, American Pie is probably the most notorious song for that because I think they must repeat that chorus at least 15, 20 times. <laughs> Sounds great, but it's a little repetitive. Anyhow, um, yeah, on the way home from Sydney, um, I actually, I actually I have to say, Corey started this thing about two nights ago. He was loading his iPod with some music, and I was like, what are you loading? And he goes, oh, he goes, right now, Madonna's like a virgin. So he plays it, and I'm like, oh, I know that song. So here I'm going, like a virgin. And yeah, I'll save you the rest of the gory details. So <laughs> Corey's lost at the corner, completely folded. Anyways, uh, so yeah, we sang that um, for a great deal of the trip back and forth to Sydney. Um, people are just looking at us like we're the law. But yeah, that was, that was interesting. Um, I, I was told, as, I, as we were driving, I was telling a couple stories. And I've been asked to retell this one. Now, the names and dates of the people involved have been changed. <laughs> um, one of the things that, that happens to me as a result of being on the radio is that uh, I, I often get noticed. Um, especially if people are not looking at me and I happen to speak, they pick up on the voice. And uh, anyways, I had the, the, the distinct pleasure of going to a party. <coughs> and uh, this party was out in Port Oxbury. And uh, I, I really didn't care to be recognized that evening. I had gone. And uh, as I was driving to Port Oxbury, I said, you know, I said, it occurs to me that 
I could go out here and, and people may recognize me because now that we're broadcasting in Bobcat, they, they get the radio show down there. And the person who was with me kind of looked at me and was like, oh, please, who do you think you are? <laughs> all right, okay, my head's getting a little large. All right, I'll stuff my ego back in my pocket. I continue driving. Anyhow, long story short, we get to the, we get to the house and um, all was well at first. Nobody recognizes me. I'm there and I'm enjoying my, uh, my evening. And a woman walks in and, and from across the room, I noticed she picks up on me. And I thought, oh, I'm, not, I'm just not gonna say anything. She probably won't figure out who I am. Well, that was fine and dandy. Until later on, I laughed and that confirmed the deal for her. So she goes, uh, she goes what did you say your name was? <laughs> Denise O'Coin. You're, you're Denise O'Coin, you're the one from the radio. And I'm like, oh my God, please no, let, let me die. Let me crawl under this carpet here in front of me and, and die for a little while. So yeah, it was a, it was a rather interesting evening. So uh, yeah, there's, there's times it's not so great. Anyhow, so with that in mind, having gone to a party, which I wish I had not been known for, we're going to say that uh, we're going to play this song here from the Irish Rovers. Wasn't that a party? Stan Rogers with this song called Make and Break Harbor. I have to say, I've been, I've been edging my way in with the fishermen trying to uh, gain passage onto their boats when fishing season starts because I want to get some video and some uh, photos of them. So, uh, yeah, if any of you are interested in having somebody who might be very, very seasick on board to laugh at, um, you know, let me know because I'd gladly, gladly go on and uh, get some photos. Anyhow, make him break harbor with Stan, with Stan Rogers. Okay, folks, I'm going to indulge myself ever so slightly again this evening. I'm, <laughs> well, it's a life of indulgence, what can I say? Um, I was just talking to Corey here, and he's not familiar with one of my favorite songs. So, therefore, I feel the need to educate him. I think, you know, it is in his best interest to learn about, as Corey put it, the old people's music. But anyways, so so this is not old people's music. I am going to play it and I'm going to tell you this is probably one of the most romantic songs I have ever heard. And perhaps it appeals to me because I have a fairly um, hectic life. Anyways, I was saying, you know, if I ever came home and I had these things said and done for me, I think I'd pretty much probably end up bawling my eyes out. So I'm not stressed much. <coughs> anyways, this is Johnny Reed with his song called Dance With Me. Oh, <laughs> there we go. I'm going to tell you a little story. And I, and with, with great thought, I have decided that some, of, some things are better left unsaid. So I'm going to fall back on an old standard that uh, has been in my family for years. Anyways, there was a... When I, when, when I was born many, many years ago, as Corey's been pointing out to me in, in recent weeks and months and years, <laughs> Anyways, uh, I was born in Toronto, so we lived in Toronto for a great number of years, and uh, with that comes all the, the fun and fanfare of being in a large city. So we used to travel on streetcars, and there was a, an older woman who had come onto the streetcar one day with a bag of potatoes, and she sat the bag of potatoes down, she put her money in to pay for her fare, and before she had the chance to pick up the bag of potatoes, the streetcar took off with a jerk, the potato sack collapsed, and the potatoes trailed down the aisle. So this poor woman was left with the chore of having to pick up the potatoes one by one. And largely to her misfortune, what happened is, as every time she would bend down to pick up a potato, the poor woman would let out a little bit of gas. So uh, this went on for five or six potatoes. There was a drunk at the back of the streetcar and he hollered out, that's it lady, if you can't catch him, shoot him. So anyways, on that note, I'm going to play the last song for the evening, and I'm going to tell you this has been me, Denise O'Coin, signing off from Super Young Room 6.1 FM, on top of Spears Down. And we will be here next week if the fates allow, and if we're all spared. Until then, be kind to one another, life is too short to do otherwise. <laughs>